Okay, so we are in with episode number three, and today's guest is my good friend, Craig Madden. So without further ado, Craig, please, can you take it away? How um, you know me, your history with competing and bodybuilding, and what you do for a job, and et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, so first off, I came across Ryan, uh, basically on Instagram, as you know, everybody meets on Instagram these days, don't they? And obviously, you're from Southampton. I'm up in Manchester Way. Now, Ryan's moved up to Manchester Way. Uh, we, see we, we have very similar interests and pretty much everything we do, we align with it, it seems, um, you know, even to height and, and body weight, etc. Yeah, with regards to myself, obviously, I've been, sorry, I say the word obviously all the time, so you're going to have to get used to that. I just have so, to edit it out, man. <laughs> yeah, just edit it out, man. So, yeah, I've been a bodybuilder since 2014. When I say I've been a bodybuilder, I've been a competing bodybuilder since 2014. I've done around about 21 shows, I think, um, off the top of my head. A few swords, a few British titles, a few overalls. Uh, so I've not done too bad. Obviously, you still want to be better. It's a progressive sport, as you know. Um, you always want to be better. But yeah, with regards to you, to yourself, mate, you know, I always looked at you on Instagram and thought, you know, he's very similar to me. And I always use you as a like a, a base to refer back to because I knew you was passionate about it like I was. And it was kind of weird how it's happened that you was, God knows how many miles away, 600 miles away or whatever it was. And you've ended up moving a few miles down the road from me and we can now train together and, you know, bounce off each other, not only from a a bodybuilding perspective, but from a work perspective as well, because we're very similar in the roles that we have and the clients that we deal with. We deal with both competitive and lifestyle. And, you know, the things that we talk about are just so similar. It's it, it's crazy. Definitely, and, yeah. That's yeah. I always saw you, because uh, I think there's a bit of a an unwritten thing with class one bodybuilders, because there's not many of us. Yeah. Like, bikini, physique, classic, they're everywhere. But when you find mm. a class one dude, you know, it's it's rare to come across. Even Paddy, you know, you're over six foot as well. Aren't you? Actually, you're both. Yeah, I was going to say you're both on six four, six yeah. six three. Both of us. Yeah, yeah. The same yeah. height and weight. Um, yeah. So I yeah, it's rare as, as a class one people. bodybuilder as well, you're going to have to have been in the sport for quite a few years before you can become that. Um, whereas obviously something like you know, no offense to a physique athlete, they can become a physique athlete within. 12 18 months um you know an yeah, right. one, we say. join the gym train for six weeks and then spend yeah. the rest the other Basically, six yeah. <laughs> do, the, do the first cycle and get on stage you know um i've just had a client inquiry just recently actually and he wants to do a show and you know he, he'll probably end up doing his first cycle and he'll be on stage um do you prep quite to, a lot of people would you say quite a lot of your clients are prep clients or um, is it a little bit of both a bit of both really i'd probably say maybe 25 percent so it's not competitors. Competitors, no, twenty five percent competitors. Yeah, um, yeah, and it's all sorts as well. You know, I've done physique, bodybuilding, figure, bikini. You know, I've literally all categories really. Um, You've had a bit of good success recently as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I have as well. Actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. I seem to do okay with it. Well, what what do you say to someone then who inquires with you and they don't have much muscle? But well, actually, this question goes to both of you. So they don't have much muscle. They want to compete. What, what, what do you do? do you, are you honest or do you try and? I think <laughs> it's one of them, isn't it? You, you, you got to be a realist at the end of the day. You know, you've got to tell them straight and say, look, you know, depending on the route you take, it's going to take such an amount of time. So if you want to be natural and want to get on stage, obviously it's going to take you longer. You might, you might be two to three years down the road before you can actually get on stage. Depending, obviously, on the level of development, like you said, if you've got no muscle, it's going to take at least two to three years, hasn't it? Um, and then with a, somebody that's willing to experiment with PEDs, obviously, it's going to take a bit bit of a shorter route. Uh, you can potentially do it in 18, 24 months, maybe. Um, obviously, they're probably not going to win the show, but they can get on stage and not look out of place. As a, as a first timer, I, I recently took a guy on, uh, I think it was about two years ago. I've known him for absolutely years, actually through bodybuilding forums, believe it or not. We both used to be part of this little forum called Iron City. Um, and I took him on a couple of years ago. He's a wrestler. And um, he just said, Oh, I just want to get into to great shape as a wrestler. I want to look good in the ring, you know, because if you, if you look good in the ring, you, you're going to get seen, aren't you, by somebody like, I don't know. He wanted to get seen by Vince McMahon, maybe, because um, obviously, you know, he prefers his muscular wrestlers. But it ended up that he's now competing in bodybuilding. Obviously, he's seen what I've done. 
Um, and he's, he's now done his first show in June, um, which he won, first timers. And he's now got the British finals, which is in four and a half weeks. And then he's got two more shows after that. So he's, he's pretty, pretty well. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not, he's one of them that's on it as well. You know, you get these people who say they want to do it, but you want somebody that's actually on it and will stay on the diet and he, and he does it. And that's, and that's the perfect client, obviously. Because there's a lot, a lot of clients that we get that they'll say they want it, but then not willing to do the work. I was just going to say, like, what, what you said about looking out of place. It's a lot. It's, that's, that's the important bit. It's like, yes, anyone could go on stage because there's no, there's no criteria where they go, oh, you've got to look a certain way. No, anyone can enter. The, but the very it's first how show. you look. Sorry, but I think if you let someone or someone compete that, like, isn't meant to, that then reflects back on you because everyone's going to think, oh, that's so-and-so's plan. Oh, did you yeah. see how we look? Oh, you know? So you, that's what you don't want. On that note, mate, I've actually, um, it takes me back to one time, and I, I think you learn from your mistakes, really. Um, one guy was, he was living in England. I hope that he doesn't watch this because he, he might be able to connect, <laughs> he might be able to connect the dots. I'm not being rude, but he lived in England and he was like, I'm moving to Australia, but before I go, I really want to step on stage. It's like something I've wanted to do my whole life. Um, and it was like four months away, and he was like, I really, really, really want to do it. And, and I was like, mm, but I just thought, yeah, okay, I, I'm, I'm going to help him fulfill his dream. He was nowhere near ready. I put him on stage anyway. Um, he needed more time, you know. There's just yeah. simply was not enough time. Yeah. And then it, then I kind of like learned the hard way because he was up on stage and he come dead last. And uh, it was a NABBA show, and I was like, because now it looks bad on me. So mm -hmm. as much as I was trying to do a nice thing for someone, it ended up backfiring kind of thing, you know? So I mean, less what, alone. what do you do in that instance? Would you broadcast it across social media that you took somebody to the stage that had done that? Or would you just try and push it to one side? Well, I think <laughs> this is the thing, isn't it? It's, it's almost that's what's going to push you not to allow that person to go on stage because yeah. people will know. People will know, oh, that's so-and-so's client. Oh, yeah. You know, so, so just off of that, you're going to think, well, do you know what? I'm not going to let that person go on stage. Mm. Yeah, I, I, in hindsight, I should have done that. But what I did instead, Craig, to answer your question, I just, he, his transformation was amazing. Yeah. It was really, really good. He, from when he met me to when he was at his finished point, it was really fucking good. So it was still great marketing for me. I just didn't really talk about the stage. I just sort of... Yeah, yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, it's lesson learned, really. That, that's obviously a personal goal for him, though, as well, wasn't it, at the end of the day? You know what, mate? And, I imagine and, um, he wanted to just get on stage and he didn't really mind where he placed. He just wanted to experience it. He was so appreciative. He was so happy. He was like, I knew I wasn't going to win anyway. I just wanted to do it. But from a business perspective, for yeah. getting more yeah. clients is probably not a good move for me. No. But it was very satisfying to help him, you know? But yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, but it's, it, but it's a problem because people assume, for some fucking reason, people have got it in their head that it's, you're in a comp prep is 12, 16, or 20 weeks. It's one of those. Mm. Well, hold on a minute. There's so many variables that come into it, okay? So how long have you been training? How have you ever been lean before? How much body fat have you got? What are your genetics like? How you know, there are so many things that come into play, but people just assume, you know, you'll have a, an incredibly overweight person, and they'll be like, oh, you know, I'm doing a show in four months or so. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah. It depends on how you start as to yeah. how long it's going to take, yeah, right? Yeah, of course, yeah. which seems really logical and really obvious to me, but some people actually don't know. Craig, we actually had that chat over Instagram, didn't we? Last week, you you had a client that. I can't. Well, I can't even. I can't remember. But you, you said about them like not, not even knowing about the macros and that. Um, do you remember? Yeah, from our perspective, being coaches, it's just kind of our bread and butter. So we just expect everybody to know with you know yeah. all the information that's out there these days. You'd expect people to know it's all on the back of back of packets and my fitness pal and, and all the rest of it. But people just tend to blind themselves to it and just oh, it's an apple. It's got no calories because it's healthy. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but I, I, I'm glad that these things are as they are because otherwise we wouldn't have jobs if everyone yeah, was super yeah. clued up. Yeah, so yeah. in a weird way, it's actually a good thing. And, it, you yeah. know, and one thing that I think I've been guilty of as a coach is treating every. Sometimes, you know, I might have the same question from twenty different people. By the time I've answered it for the twentieth time, I'm given a bit of a shorter answer because yeah. it's almost a bit annoying for me. Yeah, you got to remember you get that one a lot with the cereal. I don't know if you put cereal in. Yeah, diets, but right, but, that's what it was about. Well, milk. Not the way I'm having cereal. Oh, was that the, the thing? What, what, what did they what did they say? Sorry, uh, saying um, 
something about milk on cereal. Um, oh, I've been putting, can I put semi-skim milk on my cereal? And I'm like, well, you shouldn't be putting any milk on your cereal. It's not in, in your diet plan. You use your whey protein shake or water. Well, or, or if you're you really like... struggling, then some unsweetened almond milk is what I suggest. Yeah. I, 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 I would put milk in some people's pans. I would specifically write milk. Yes. People, mm. people assume, yeah, like, so yeah. Oh, do, you not, do you not find the same with oats? When yeah, you give someone yeah, oats, they I always have milk recently, in their oats, yeah. don't they? Yeah, 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 that recently. And it's like, if it's not itemised, yeah, they yeah. have it. That, that's the thing, though. I've never had milk with oats, even as yeah, a child, I don't think. So it's just not even... I actually a, prefer it with water. Yeah. But, yeah, it's like, um, you know, people not realising that food, if it's a food, it's got calories. Like, yeah. even if it's, like, lower, more... And you and I have had this chat before, Craig, like, quite a few times. People just add in fruit. They just add... Oh, yeah. I was a bit hungry, so I added in some fruit. You go, yeah. oh... I had a client, and he was doing um, three pieces of fruit in a in a blender three times a day on top what? of his diet. <laughs> what's that about 900 calories <laughs> hey but there are but there are answers but fruit's healthy and i was like he's only losing half a pound a week how can he be losing half a pound a week on this diet i've got him on yeah but yeah but craig fruit is healthy you see that's well, yeah, it, doesn't well, that's it, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. <laughs> right. should we get into your uh your point so before yeah. we started this i asked craig to send over his three three things and he sent over five <laughs> So you must have a lot of things that wind him up. But we're going to go one by one. I think there's some quite good ones. So um, we'll work our way through. So where are they? Here you go. Number one to go into room bodybuilding 101. Competing in classic bodybuilding because you're not big enough for open. Dave? <laughs> Who wants to start? Do you go, do you go Dave? Right to start? Well, well no, you've got, hold on, mate. You've got to tell okay. us what you mean. Yeah, by, yeah, like, you, what you lined you up about that? that? Sorry, sorry. So, so I just think that people, they go from first-timers to novice, and then they think, oh, I'm not really big enough to go into open, but but I've won a trophy in novice now, so where do I go? Oh, I'm going to have to go into classic. No, just try your hand at open bodybuilding. You know, it takes you, like, that, that's what I did. I went straight from novice to open bodybuilding within, I think I went from, yeah, 2017 was my first open bodybuilding competition and I was a novice in 2015. So it took me two years, I took the two years out to do it. Um, but rather than competing every year, like a lot of people do, they just go straight into classic and then you can you can see right away what a classic physique. We all know what a classic physique is. You know, the, the small hips, the the wide shoulders, um, the sweeping quads, etc. But you get these people on stage now, they think if they get lean enough and they're, they're under the, the weight cap that... And they can pull a few classic poses that, that that's them classic. Well, no, it's not. <laughs> Simple as there's not. Maybe, maybe there should be another category between novice and open. I don't know. What do you think? Uh, go on, Dave. You go. You go. Yeah, that, that that's. Do you know what? Look, well, it's nice to like disagree sometimes because then we can we can obviously have like points of discussion. But I can't really disagree with that. I, I think you know just because you can hit a twisted double bicep don't make you classic. And yeah. I think. There's a certain criteria of you've got to look like that to kind of fit that. But because there isn't, that there's it's not written anywhere, anyone can enter. So, like you said, a lot of people think, well, I'm just gonna do classic. And you know, you're just a small bodybuilder. Um, I've, I've taken offense quite a few times actually at competitions when I've gone to register and they've, they've assumed that I've been a classic bodybuilder. I'll get that. Yeah, really? Really? Well. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's funny because you go into the show and it was actually in 2019 at the PCA Northwest. They asked if I was a classic bodybuilder and I ended up winning the Open and the overall. So it was quite yeah. funny. I was like, yeah, there you go. <laughs> yeah, to, I had it some guy. I was yeah, I was um, going for a show and I was in the toilet before and he went, hey, mate, I could be today. And I was like, yeah, yeah, well, it's the tan. And he was like, well, are you classic? And I was like, don't, don't bite. <laughs> Don't bite, but um, but yeah, as you say, I went on and won the show anyway. So like, yeah, yeah, especially at the show when you're like depleted and you just think fuck everything. Yeah, hundred like, percent, yeah, very aggy. It's, very it's aggy. almost the same as people saying that you've gotten smaller when you dieted in prep, isn't it? Yeah, 100%. yeah, you lost weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah you lost weight. <laughs> you, you downsized. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah. But it, right, like... you had that last year. and knew someone at the petrol station said to you, "Oh, you're like you look slimmer." And you're like. Oh yeah, man! <laughs> I, I, there's, it came up as a memory the other day on my Facebook. Some guy said to me about competing, and I was wearing shorts that covered came to my knees. And this might be the one you're on about, Dave. It was in a petrol station, and he said to me, uh, "He goes, 
you, you compete, but your legs are only small, like because you can only see my calves. So I literally <laughs> pulled. I was in the middle of the shop, and I just pulled my shorts down, and I was and I showed him my quads, and he was like, okay, and I was like, fuck, and I, <laughs> and I thought to myself, I walked out of the shop, and I was pretty fucking flushed. I was like embarrassed, but I was like, what the f-? like oh my god, like why? Yeah. But that, that's the sort of shit because I don't know. Sometimes when you're wearing clothes, it covers it up, and oh man, I don't know. No, it was last year. You, it was a, the 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 person at the counter. So you went up to pay, and she was like, she was like, oh, I can see you're, you're oh, dying. You yeah. look smaller, and you were in your car like fucking raging about it. The the funny thing is, to her, I was like, oh yeah, no, I'm, you know, whatever, whatever. And I got into my car, and I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> fuck's sake. You don't find like um, as a bodybuilder though, you just like you don't care where where you drop your pants or take your top off. It doesn't even matter anymore. It's just it's like it's just normal. In no other walk of life is that a normal. Yeah, behavior, it's just like you know I mean? imagine. <laughs> Fuck. Um, but yeah, to go back to the classic thing, right? So yeah, definitely, I think people are just so impatient and they need it now, now, now. Yeah, yeah. When actually they should take time to 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 work with their strengths. If you're not classically built, you know, you haven't got a small waist. With uh, wide shoulders, I think their I think their argument will be that they care too much about health to push up to be an open bodybuilder. Therefore, they want probably to take more gear than like the open. Well, this is a good point. Yeah. Like people assume yeah. that if you're smaller, you take less gear. When yeah. I was smaller, I took more gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Se- seeing as we've got five to go through, right? I think we should go on. The, uh, we should make a decision now. Yeah, to- that one's a yes. That one's just a, that's a, in the room a straight- one. Yeah. yeah, I agree. That is in room number one. Yeah. Bing! <laughs> so now we move on to point number two. Right. Point number two is preaching a certain method or a type of exercise technique and not having the physique to back it up. Please elaborate. So I just see it a lot on Instagram. These people, they're doing five-second negatives and three-second positives and two-second holds. And then you look... look throughout their profile and the physique just doesn't represent what they're actually telling you to do. I just think it's wrong. You know, surely you should have had some sort of physique at some point in your life to be able to be giving advice out like that. You know, there's more than one way to, I hate to say in skin a cat, but these people just preach one way. Yeah, I do agree with controlling the negative portion of the list. Lift, of course I do. Um, but there's more than one way. And I, th- I feel like training's become so rigid now. Uh, where everything has to be, oh, I have to feel it, like, you know, squeeze and, you know, and it's like yourself, you know, you you put a, a lot of your mass on your back down to the barbell row. Now, we know that's more of a power exercise as such, and it's not something that, you know, you're going to feel a massive contraction on, um, but obviously it builds a back. Um, whereas I see a lot of people now, they're just doing exercises that are just not needed, basically. Do you um, want that reminder? Well, I know, I could say that, but like with, with you today, with your chest, Ryan, um, you know, you were doing certain exercises that I wouldn't go near, but, I, but for a weaker body part, maybe there's an argument for it. But I think for your overall physique, you're usually probably only going to have one or two weak body parts. We, we were talking about this the other day, Chad. Yeah, so I trained uh, chest with Craig earlier, and, and I've got to do stuff to try and feel my chest. But anyway, so what were you going to say, Chad? So you know, it reminds me of there was a, a meme last year. It was like a, a like a like a like a ladder sort of steps, and that person goes from like the first to like the tenth, and that's what it is. It's almost like you've skipped yeah. like the first yeah. ten steps. Yeah. Meaning we all started out, you know, just squat, bench, down. and we had that chat with Dan last last podcast as well. Almost like you've skipped out on the first bit, which is kind of the base. You know, you've got your house and you start building the base, and like the the kind of that that like really squeezy pull down movements, they are just like the icing on the cake, something that you're going to use after, you know, you go and hit your deadlifts and then after that, you come back and do yeah. that, you know, almost like that. Yeah. It's like these guys, they don't have any mats, but they're, they're trying to fine tune their physique. And it's like, well, what are you fine tuning? So instead have the bread and butter and build up that base and then refine it. Once you have that, mm. by trying to overly science things when you've got fuck all strength, fuck all size, <sighs> It's just a bit like, I don't know, what are you doing? I think it's build a physique first and then worry about all the little things later. But I think, you know, like Dave was saying, you know, they just 
worry about all the little things first and then they don't end up getting anywhere. Do you, would you sort of say social media is a lot to blame for this? I think so, yeah. Because obviously we see it all over social media and every, everyone's trying to be an online coach these days with no, and they've got just, they've just literally got no credibility half of them, but they're just good at basically making a sale. Um, they're good at marketing, they're not good at bodybuilding. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. I mean. yeah, 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 yeah. Would you say that's more in the UK than say in America? Because when you watch guys in America, they're still trained like you look at them and you think, oh, that's how I used to train. Like, you know, it, a lot of us down here, like we follow JP, so we just see JP. But you don't think, oh, JP spent like the first 10 years of his training, you know, barbell pressing and, you know, yeah. Pick, you can still fucking pick up like, three, like 300 kilos, like it's nothing. But people yeah. don't pay attention to that. They pay attention to the, like detail work that he does that you just think well yeah know? because 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 youngsters are impressionable or not not just youngsters newbies are impressionable to the new the new thing that they're into and they go straight to the top because they're not going to go and look at people similar to them they're going to go and look at jp they're going to go and look at Colin ted mark hector all the people at the top of the tree um in the uk and what are they doing i better copy mm. them because they're the best without realizing that this is a, a hierarchy you know and, and, it, and it, it's step by step I think you know, it was an argument that you two had on, on the first podcast, actually, feel versus load, and, and which is more important. Um, I feel it is a, a balance between both, but I think when you're starting out, you need to be loading the bar. Um, and yeah, obviously, execution form is very important, but you know you do need to be loading that bar and, and putting some intense sets through. And, you know, It's something you learn through experience, isn't it? Being able to take heavy loads there. Um, that's if, what Dan said if actually. Too busy, said, if you're too busy fannying around with these three second negatives and five second pauses, you know, you'll be li- you'll be lifting five kilo. You know what I mean? If you if you never actually expose yourself to big loads. That's actually what Dan said. He, he sort of put it like as a beginner, you haven't got the neurological connection yeah. with that muscle. Yeah. So you're better off just putting the weight on. And that will put on a certain amount of muscle. And then at that point, you can actually start to yeah, yeah, yeah. focus on the rest. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. if you've got no muscle there, then how the hell can you feel that muscle working? Mm. You know? The, 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 <laughs> I think there's, there's direct correlation between the bigger I've got and the more I can feel. Yeah. Like the, yeah. My, my connection with everything that I do. And um, I think you can both agree. Have we got a counter-argument? Have we got anything we can say that to kind of be like, no, actually, almost... Uh, I get. I guess the, count, the counter argument would be: um, I want to make sure that I'm perfecting every single variable that I can, rather than just being like a, a fucking Neanderthal and just just throwing weight around for the sake of it. But it's about you know I'm really trying to hone in on that, rather than thinking about. I think we can both agree on this as well. All, sorry, all three of us can agree. For years, you were just sort of getting a bit better, a bit better, a bit better. Maybe by doing that at an earlier stage, you can fast track your progress. Potentially, yeah. Ronnie Coleman and Branch Warren, the way they train. Are you saying they train for feel? Dan Dan said this last night. Dan used those two people as examples. Right, okay. Yeah, yeah, he said exactly the same thing. He was just like, yeah. you know, they train like shit, but it works, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but unless you are genetically gifted, I would suggest you need to basically go somewhere in the middle. Yeah. 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 You know, chucking know, yeah. shit around for the sake of it, no. No. Being overly scientific, no. Yeah, somewhere in the middle. Yeah, there I mean, when you say that yeah. when you when you look at both of them now, they're both fucked. Yeah, yeah. Is Branch fucked as well? I think. Yeah, Branch he's torn every muscle. Like, has it? Pretty much. His it, it, biceps <laughs> about that long now. It's all like, like yeah. pulled up. <laughs> yeah, fuck's sake. <laughs> I know it, it's pretty sad, but um, I don't think that the way that they train necessarily is what fucked them. Right? So hit, hit, hit them in, there with me. The only reason Ronnie is fucked now is because he was lifting whilst injured. If you, if you, I don't know if you've seen his documentary. He said that he was injured from a young age in his back. He right. never let it heal, and he kept re-injuring it. Yeah, he was at school, wasn't he? Yes, yeah, playing football. You know what I think? I think as a beginner starting out on a powerlifting tanker or like a not strong man because I, I can't say about strong man because I'm not versed in that. But powerlifting, I think it's it's really well put together. The volume is put together to a beginner, and it, it almost like sets you up for success, sets you up to get to a certain number, which I think is beneficial when you first start out. Definitely. And it's it's very big on um, recovery and not sort of like um, over overexerting yourself, injuring yourself. And what the good thing about that is it will get you to a baseline of strength. Mm. And 
as a byproduct of that, you will have built muscle, and then you can start to refine it once you've done that. Isn't that that's, that's actually a really good piece of advice, yeah. David? Isn't that something that's coming into bodybuilding at the minute, though, with all these so many reps in reserve? Uh, it's our favourite expression in the day. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> how can right. you aim to four reps in reserve? How do you know? How do you, how do know? you know? Like, I don't get that. Yeah, I've never got that. See, get we we want to... someone that that does that preach that so we can like kind of yeah. see what yeah. they actually yeah. how they yeah sort of... be interesting to hear that they'd be interested yeah. in that yeah anyway so we can get on and do the other ones right so room one hundred one should it be in it or not preaching yes. a certain method but not having the physique to back it up yes I agree next one next one photoshopping pictures to appear bigger on social media. Elaborate, please. Have you seen? Have you got specific ones in mind? Or I, I have got people in mind. I'm not going to say any names. No, um, no, no, no. But I've seen, I've seen. Well, I've seen them at shows, and then oh. I've seen them on social media, and it's like, hmm. There <laughs> is a guy. Look, there is a guy. Your arms look twice as big on social media. What's There's going on? Oh, mate, there is a guy. I've seen him on social media, and when I, when I look, he literally makes me double take. Um, and it's weird because because you, your, your social media is full of bodybuilders, so you end up being desensitized, right? Yeah, yeah. You've seen yeah. it all before, but this dude literally makes me go. Like, I have to like, oh. yeah, yeah. And I saw him compete. I saw him compete in uh in March this year, and I was like, right. Can you say who it is? Definitely not. That's too uh no, <laughs> no, yeah, no, no. Yeah. Uh, but I, I'll, I'll say it to you off camera. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, Do you know yeah, what? Okay. I, mean, I think taking videos is a way to so i always not always but half the time i'll do a check-in and i'm like right here's a video so then you can you can't say shit you can't say shit to that you can't photoshop the video yeah, yeah. I, I i do the same thing I do the you same do the thing. same yeah you yeah, both do the yeah, same yeah. thing yeah definitely i think it's um it's a deep rooted insecurity um where you know i actually um, i think once you've done it on, once though you set a precedence for the rest of your Social media yeah. time, don't you? Well, I just think it's embarrassing because then when you people yeah. do see you in person and realise that you're not, yeah, everyone, exactly, yeah, you yeah. catfished everyone. I think um, I actually saw someone doing it the other way around, so they are making their, their waist smaller, right? And you could literally see the tiles behind them were all like warped. <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. And I actually, I actually inboxed him. I actually inboxed him. Was this um, was this a wannabe classic bodybuilder? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, he's kind of classic. I doubt he'll ever watch this, and but I ain't gonna say his name. But yeah, I inboxed him, um, and it and he, yeah, he did not take it nice and kindly. Best just to say yeah. that, and he sent me a video, and the video did not look like it, and I was like, well, yeah, obviously. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. The thing is, tell you what though, like a lot of that, you it can come down to angles and lighting and pump, and mm. you know, because because we know that when because we both we both we're all take uh, our progress pictures fasted first thing in the morning when you look your worst. Yeah. 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 Like we all do that. Or three of us. And then a lot of people will then take a picture or I'll take a picture in the gym mm. and I think, Oh fucking hell. And I'm like, well, yeah, because when you're fasted, it's not a, 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 the same thing. It's, a, it's under different conditions. Yeah. So a lot of people that they'll just do that or they'll have like a wide camera um, lens, you know, whatever it is. And they'll just look stupid on social media. And you see them and you think, well, yeah. it doesn't well, think, translate. Well, I think a lot of people don't realise it's an interesting thing because you, you and me spoke about this earlier, Craig. People don't understand lighting, the difference lighting can make oh, to a physique. Such a difference. Yeah, we were talking about... Like, just, just moving a couple of inches back or to the left, it can make... Oh, it's it's mad. You can, look, yeah. you can look like you've regressed from two years ago or dramatically improved from two years ago just mm -hmm. based on where you stood. It's crazy. It's crazy. It's because of social media. Again, it's kind of social media's fault that people are very, very insecure. So they feel the need to do the, this kind of stuff. But if you're a serious competitor, I can't see why you'd want to do that. I no. can't see why the fuck. It, it's, it's one thing, you know, creating a certain angle to make your arm look bigger, but then to actually install an app on your phone to actually use it to distort your muscles, that's a, a whole different playing field, you know. Uh, no, I think not, um, but we've, again, all, we've all got the angle on pictures, haven't we? I mean, you've got the angle on me a few times. <laughs> <laughs> you like to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Oi, hold on a minute, Craig. I've got. I, I actually deleted the video, but today <laughs> I, did, I did a I did a post down with Craig today, and you should see him. He's fucking edging forward all the time to his poster. <laughs> you did it again. You did it again. 
they, they, they call me Craig Laverone. <laughs> <laughs> so, mate, you stand like this, your feet are in line with Craig, and he starts edging. And before you know it, he's here. It's like, fuck yeah, that, that it's your fault not, 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 to, not to have done that too. Well, no. Because <laughs> then if we both do, we'll watch, watch me when I'm on stage. Do you remember when we did that to Connor on stage? What's that? Ryan, do you remember when he did that to Connor on stage? Connor, yeah. Um, Craig, did you, you were there as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you saw it as well. Yeah, the one yeah. this year. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, well, I guess so. I, I, I knew that Connor was my biggest, uh, my biggest threat. So yeah, I just yeah. had to go and I just had to go and try and out muslim you know. <laughs> but, it worked. Yeah, it was good. <laughs> good show. Yeah, man. It, it was. It was basically it was me and him, and whoever of us won would have won the overall. Yeah, yeah. I was just going to say it was literally. That yeah. wasn't it, basically. Yeah. yeah. So I knew once he was done, I was like, yeah. I fancy my chances now. But there were still a couple of other good guys. I mean, you know, Anton Scott was in there as well. Anton yeah. was good. Yeah, Anton. He, 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 actually well. didn't make, he didn't make the top three. He came fifth. Yeah. It, it's weird the way they do that with Fitex. So Wasn't they, it? A, I think a they like to have a physique guy. guy. Second. Yeah. They like to have a men's physique guy in there, don't they? So So the guy who came second in the overall to me, he uh, he went on one his, he won his GBO pro card. Uh, in men's oh. physique as well. So oh. now he's competing as a pro in the GBO. He's quite oh. good. The guy who came third was a really nice dude. He was a class... Lee, leader. was it Lee? No, 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 no. He's a South African guy with long hair and a beard. Oh, yes, yes, yeah, I remember. He, 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 didn't, he, didn't, have much, he didn't have much size, but he had good, he had good condition. Mm. He was yeah. older, a bit smaller, yeah. but yeah, he's lean. Yeah, for sure. And a Anton, sorry, Anton was fourth or fifth. I don't know which one because they call out the top five. Yeah. In, in overall, and then they do the top three. But yeah. People who Photoshop their pictures to appear, appear bigger on social media. Room 101, yes or no? Yes. Yes. Has to be. Bing. 100%, mate. 100%. Fucking good one, actually. This is, ah, this, if, if I were to be asked this question, this would be in mine. So. Talking about a pro card or overall win when you have not even set stepped foot on a stage. Please, can you elaborate, my friend? Yeah, so, I mean, obviously, I've competed now for, what, how many years is it? Eight years, and I don't, I think it's probably only in this past year have I ever actually spoke about a pro card. Um, and that's a PCA pro card as well and not an IFBB one. I don't even think I'd ever talk about an IFBB one. Um probably because I'm just not interested in it. But <laughs> um, And even before I, I spoke about an overall, you know, when I won my first overall, like I went into that show not even expecting to win my class. So then to win the overall, it just happened. Um, so, so it's quite disrespectful then for people to, you know, just gym goers that are prepping for the first ever competition, then be talking about, oh, yeah, I want that sword on Sunday. I want that overall title. And you're like, well, it's taken me five years to get my first overall. I mean, a bit disrespectful to say the least, to be fair. Yeah, I, I, I come across this, I come across this so much and I, I can't believe it. Like, we, we've had this conversation. Right. Um, it's like, I didn't win an overall for six years. It took me six years to win my first one. I've won three now, but it took me six years to get one. You know, for the first three years, I was just, just fighting it out to try and get basing yeah, on me yeah, yeah. if I can. Yeah. Just to win your first class sort of thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. You know. and that goes uh, the, back to that goes back to the skipping the steps, doesn't it? Though it's yeah, almost like yeah. you know, try and get to you know win your class, and then mm. potentially like do well at the overall, and then maybe look at the overall, you know, winning at the overall, and then you know, almost like it worked your way up, you know. Yeah. I yeah. think that's today's society as a whole, though, isn't it? Not having patience in life. It's like anything, you know, they're scrolling through Instagram. Everything's at 100 miles an hour these days, so they just want it now. And they're not actually willing to actually work the way up the ladder. Um, but surely, surely it's more rewarding to work your way up the ladder. You don't want to win something right away. Surely you want to mm. work your way mm. towards it. That's a good point. It's, you know, it's, weird. it's a weird thing to say, but it's a weird concept. I think you mm. shouldn't win straight away. But I agree. Yeah. It, it's more satisfying for it to yeah, be built it is, up yeah. over time. Yeah. There's, a, there's, a, um, there's a psychological thing. Uh, condition called uh, the Dunning Kruger effect. Yeah, have you guys ever heard of it? Or coming? Yeah, yeah maybe you mentioned it to me before. Yeah. Basically, people of low ability in a specific field often overestimate their ability, and people of higher level in that specific field underestimate their ability. 
And it's like, yeah. it's, it's very, very common among people. Yeah. Because you don't know about the subject, you assume that you're better than you are. Because it's just mm. ignorance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I think that I think that's coming into play quite a lot. Mm. Um, and people, you know, at the gym, they might be the biggest guy in their gym and they've got a load of people mm. in their ear saying, mate, you'd fucking smash it. You'd fucking smash it. And, and they're like, well, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Well, okay. well, that's just the thing, isn't it? Sometimes they're not even the biggest guy in the gym. So why are they even thinking about winning a, a national bodybuilding show if they're not even the biggest guy in their gym, you know? I don't think people realise quite the level of, of what it takes to be a pro. Mm. They, they, until you've been competing for a, an extended period of time, you don't truly know. No, no. You really don't. It's, it's seen in, in this day and age... In 2022, it's seen as an easy thing to do to get a pro card compared to before. Yeah. Okay. I dare you to go and try and get one. Yeah. You know, if it's that easy, go and get one. It's mm -hmm. it's still fucking hard. Yeah, of course. Yeah. I'll agree they're given out more readily. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. like, it's a business, right? Yeah. But certainly it is not fucking easy. It's very, very difficult. The thing is also, if you... So we've actually had that chat before. If you're someone that can be a really good national competitor, level competitor, or a shit pro, what would you rather? Because yeah. what I'm saying is, right, there are people that, let's say, they'll get to a, a stage that they, let's say, for example, like, or two on two, they'll get their pro card in that, but they're kind of like maxed out, but because of their structure, they can't really get past, go to the open, so you're kind of stuck in that two on two. Mm. Yep. So, would you, you, you got somebody in mind here? <laughs> Sounds like you might have. <laughs> Again, I'm not gonna because it, no. <laughs> it. I'm not gonna sort of. No, no. Like you say, like yeah. But, yeah, um, yeah. What What do you reckon? Yeah, go on, Craig. You go. No, I I agree completely. Um, there's a few people that have have got the pro card recently that you know we've said that probably that might be the end of the road for them basically with regards right. to success. Um, as an amateur, absolutely unbelievable. But as soon as they're a pro, they're just a bit too far down and probably don't have the genetics to really compete with with the top boys. Um, but but time will tell at the end of the day. You know, you can't. I think there's one market. one guy that we can sort of think of. And again, I hate to like mention because, you know, you can sort of work it out. But, you know, going into open and then you're kind of like, oh, you know, you, you'd see that you don't fare in open. So they're jumping back in two on two, and you're kind of like, oh, like you should kind of just not Stick with what you want, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I guess, I guess so. But then, I, I think I know who you're on about. I think we can I do it. as well. Yeah, yeah. I know you're on and about, yeah. and he's fucking, he's so good, but he's just a little bit too short, and therefore he fits better in two on two. So I, I, I don't know. I, I can get it. Okay, great. Let me put it to you. Because we're both six foot three and we've both been competing the time that we have and we're both class one and we love being a class one, right? Yeah. If you could downsize a tiny bit, be a classic guy, even though you're not classic, it would make you a pro, would you? See, that's something I've often thought about, but for me, it just doesn't appeal. Uh, me too. You know, it's something, you know, especially when you, you do go to shows and you're like, and people have said, I, I, so people have told me backstage, reputable people as well, they said, oh, you'd be fantastic in, in the classic division. You'd, you'd be a pro in no time. Just just get yourself there. And I'm like, well, to be honest, I don't really fancy it. Um, the posing for a start, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not an elegant poser, if you like. Um, so that would be something I'd have to be working on right away. And then there's the, the thought of doing vacuums and, you know, it's just not what I'm in, in bodybuilding for. I'm in bodybuilding to, to build muscle, um, build as much muscle, muscle as possible. The thing about a lot of these sure I have. Uh, posing coaches that almost spend too much time on posing than their actual physique. Mm. You see quite a lot of that now. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. it's kind of what we touched on earlier. They're trying to outpose the fact that they're not classic. Yeah. You know, I saw a guy at weekend, I think it was, PCA Midlands. Um, I think it was an Asian guy. Absolutely fantastic posing. Unbelievable posing. But he just no, wasn't. Got, I saw him. Just was in condition. If he yeah. was in condition, unbelievable. But he's probably spent all his time doing this posing routine that he's not had time to maybe have a coach or whatever. Do, do you know what? It's it's. There's a new breed of of bodybuilder that is, and I, I believe that the rise of Chris Bunstead, I think, is is largely to, to blame for it. That they are, they, they're all they're all about the classic, and and in their in their bio, they'll have like you know that like um easel, the little art thing. 
<laughs> on the pong pad. They'll have that in there, and like, and, and all their poses are like this, but they haven't really got any muscle. Um, yeah, I'll have a moustache. Yeah, <laughs> and it's like uh, I don't know. I think, I think you've you've lost in life as soon, soon as you've grown a moustache <laughs> because you want to be classic. I mean. You've lost your own personality when you've done that. I tell you, and it's great to just be like out of a lineup of like five guys, three of them have like have it, and you just think, yeah, it's just. Tell you, mate, it's Chris Bumstead. He is he's a bit of a phenomenon. His yeah, popularity yeah. is yeah. pretty fucking yeah. crazy. Yeah, and and he and he. The other thing as well, you can get away with being a bit smaller. Yeah, and and I think that appeals to people because it's like a, it's the path of least resistance. Mm. You know, as a classic bodybuilder, do you really have to push food in the off season? You probably wouldn't want to because you wouldn't want to risk the the distension on the stomach, would you? It's easier. So it's, so easier. it's easier, isn't it? No matter what they say, it's easier. I think it's for I, both of you being over three hundred pounds. That's like it's hard. Yeah. You know what? Though? You know, it, especially Craig, when you're trying to do that. <laughs> for someone like me that's trying to push weight up and it you know can only imagine what that's like for, for, for you like back you know. pumps just walking around mate oh <laughs> unbelievable I, I uh i'm not designed to be big i, I know this through my, my digestive tract i'm not like I, I get very full i'm not a big eater some people are in a smaller body but they can eat loads yeah i'm not one of them I, i've got a big body but i don't believe that my stomach has grown the same does that make sense? My stomach yeah, is still yeah, that yeah, of a smaller yeah. man. Yeah. Do you know uh, what? I think a lot of these people that are smaller, but they say they can eat a lot. This is shit, shit. Hey, do you know what? I love it when people say that they eat loads and they're fucking like, yeah, they're scrawny yeah. as fuck. You're like, come on, come on. Do you really yeah. eat loads though? You know? Exactly. That's the point. They fucking don't. They, they say they do, and it's a load of shit because your body yeah, is shocked. saying that though, I have a client, I won't mention his name, but he's around about 200 pounds, and you know, he's, he was on a thousand grams of carbs at one point, um, and he wasn't really shifting with weight. So, well, then it's really down to it. cardio, just 10,000 steps. Do you so. definitely trust him? Yeah, fully trust him. Yeah. Some people can, can definitely handle more. There's no doubt about it. But I think a lot of the time people grossly uh, slim people believe they eat loads mm. and overweight people believe they don't eat a lot. Yeah. I think yeah. this is quite a common thing, you know? Yeah. And it's like your body doesn't, you, your body's not playing a trick on you. Mm. If you're skinny, yeah. if you're skinny with no muscle, but you're saying you eat a lot, yeah. maybe it's time to look in the mirror. So talking about pro cards or overall wins before you've stepped on stage in room 101, yes or no? Definitely. Has to be one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Right now, the final one. This is a good one. This is a good one, especially. I like that one. What I said. <laughs> you got to remember. Okay, well, this is this is going to be a great talk one, and hopefully you guys can have a good good debate with it. You know, so coaching people for shows that have not done a show themselves. Mm. Uh, can you elaborate, please? So yeah, obviously we 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 see it again on social media. People coaching. Um, clients that either have not done a show at all, um, so I have no experience of actually feeling the, the depths of prep, shall we say, or they have prep, they've done a show, but they've not even placed. Um, so have they even experienced, you know, the depths of prep, shall we say? That certainly shouldn't be a thing in, in, in my view. Um, you know, if you've not been on stage, you have no right to be prepping somebody, not only from, you know, a knowledge point of view, but from, a health point of view as well obviously you know it's not an, it's not a healthy sport it's not a healthy thing to, to prep for a competition and if you're putting somebody on god knows what calories and, and drugs and you don't know what you're doing properly then um yeah it's just a it's just a no-go for me um you need to have some experience in it yourself for sure um, good so First, first off, if it were me, I just want to sort of um, say, I wouldn't hire someone who hasn't competed yeah. to prep me, yeah. if that were me. Now, I haven't competed, but yet I've had quite a few clients that have competed, and people still do ask me to prep them beyond me why. I, I personally wouldn't. Um, but that said, it's almost like, I don't think you have to have competed. I, I get the point where if you haven't been there, you can't really relate to it as much. But I think if you're into bodybuilding, it almost, or if you've had a client for a long time and you kind of understand how their body works, um, you, you, you can get it done. 
Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't do it with everyone. Uh, I have to have worked with people for you know a, a good amount of time so I can learn their bodies. But yeah, if I can, what I can agree with, if if I had to hire a coach, I wouldn't go for someone that hasn't competed. So that's interesting. You kind of agree with Craig, but also kind of you you are that you are it, but then you kind of agree. You sort of if it, if up. I had to pick someone to prep me, I wouldn't trust someone that hasn't done it themselves. But from me having done it, I see that it can work. If that, if that makes sense. So it, uh, th there's a difference. So, uh, so the thing is, with you, Chad, like you've got. A, uh, I, again, I'm gonna big you up here, mate. I think you've got a very, very good physique, and potentially, if you could take it there with the diet, which you could. What I mean is, if you want, if you truly, truly, truly wanted to, I think you could be very, very good. So it's not like you haven't done the mileage. You, you, you're a smart guy, and you've got a great physique. And the potential is there. You just, I don't think the desire to get on stage is there. So my, my thing to you, oh, Craig, yeah, was, so, so if, if Chudley just simply doesn't want to, he does want to take people onto stage, he wants to help people, would that not be valid? Is there, is there any? I think, I think you can only take somebody so far if you've not done it yourself. You can take them to a, you may be 90% of what the person could have been just because. Yeah. I think it's the the peak week thing that's the big one for me. Um, but, yeah, but everyone needs a different peak. Would you, yeah. Would you say? Would you say that it's you know, it's it's not a one size fits all kind of thing, though, is it? With a, with a peak. No, it's not. Obviously, it has to be tailored to the person for sure. Um, I think that's where obviously knowing your client comes in. So, for example, yeah. you know, if you've coached someone for a year, two yeah, years, was, you've was, learned their body yeah. fairly well yeah. to where you can be like, okay, I've I've tried that. That's mm. how they respond to that. Um, and also that comes with obviously having done it um, yeah. over and over. Yeah. Um, Trial and error, isn't it? And mm. I think a lot of people say, yeah, what what I can agree with what you say about taking them to a 90%. But let's say if you said to me, can you coach me? I can't coach you better than someone who's, you know, a, 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 you know, who coaches people like you that weigh, you know, 120 kilos on stage. However, someone who's, smaller potentially and someone that you know doesn't have to overcomplicate the the peak because i think this is what a lot of people do they'll overcomplicate the peak and actually yeah. end up looking worse off yeah yeah so I for, for people for people sorry for people watching can can you explain a peak break could you explain what the the purpose of that is and what that is because not everyone yeah. necessarily knows so yeah so first and foremost you're only going to be able to do a peak if you're actually in shape to begin with um so if you're not out of, if you're not in shape you've not followed your diet properly or you've not dieted long enough, then a peak is not going to work. But a peak is something that's going to obviously peak your physique for stage. Um, <laughs> so obviously there's going to be water manipulation involved, which involves obviously loading water, cutting water um, to present a drier physique on stage. And the, and the other bit is obviously the, the depleting of carbohydrates prior to peak week. Um, and then the fat loading and carb loading to present a, a full dry physique. Um, okay. It's yeah. time to get on stage. And this is a, it's very much a timing thing as well. Um, you know, if you time it wrong, it, it, like you said, you can end up looking worse on stage. Um, and it's an interesting thing what you said as old child, like a bigger guy is more complex because yeah. you, you're, you're managing fullness. And when we talk about fullness for people watching, we're talking about, um, how uh, inflated basically the muscles are, yeah. and when you've got a lot of muscle mass, it's very easy for your muscles to become, become uh, flat in appearance. You're always mm. trying to make sure you're eating enough food to maintain the muscle mass, and not so much that you're then putting them into a surplus where they're going to look worse and gain body fat. I think so. So it's that. It's um, it's it's a it's an art, and it's very fucking hard. I remember when I was coaching myself, uh, I, I I don't know if I ever got it right. Yeah. I don't That's, know if I ever got it right. It's always something you're going to have to trial and error. You can't literally go throughout a prep and then just guess your peak week, guess your carb load. Now I know that's what some people do because they don't give themselves enough time to prep, and therefore they're dieting all the way through. And then they think, right, peak week's there. I'll just do a peak and I'll just chuck in so many carbs and let's let's just hope for the best. See, you know, um, a lot of it. it, or they overdo it. Close your eyes and just throw a dart. Yeah, I much. think a lot of it, like, yes, it's complex, but also it's simple. If you're yeah. 
if you use a little bit of common sense, meaning start early, get in shape, then that allows for you to practice yeah. the peak run before the weeks before. So then you can say, yeah. right, if I give them a burger, that's how they respond. Yeah, if yeah. I give them clean carbs, that's how they respond. If I give them this much, they respond like that. Yeah. If I do, you know, so then you try all that or you've coached them for a while. So then you kind of know that. Um, I you think know, the only I, thing you can't trial really is obviously the water manipulation. So you've just got mm. to obviously... But that's the thing. When you're doing a trial run of carbs, you don't manipulate the water. So all variables are not equal. There's always no, a bit no. like... It's always and there's always the factor of stress as well. You know, people get stressed yeah. the day, don't they? And also, just... if you're two weeks out, how you, the level of condition you have at two weeks out is not the same as yeah. three days out. And you might well be still doing cardio two weeks out, whereas on peak week, you're not doing cardio. Yeah. So it's, it's hard. Yeah. Do, doing trial runs too far out is kind of pointless, isn't it? It's... Um, yeah. You Do you reckon... reckon? I, I, because there's too many variables, Chad. You know, you're thinking about like the condition of someone at three, four weeks out. No way. Yeah, it's just not, it's just not relevant. Oh, I see right. it more from a, a digestive standpoint, where that makes sense. You, you know, if you see if you give someone a, a burger, they actually respond really well, and then other people it messes up their stomach for two days. Uh, I, I get what you're saying. But, yeah. yeah, but the, but the uptake of nutrients when you're three slash four weeks out is not not com comparable to when you're five days out. It's not. Yeah, your, body, your, body, your body's uh, completely depleted. You're completely flattened off. Card cardio is usually been dropped out a week out or so, give or take, depending on the client. So th there's too many things to like consider, you know? Mm. So a lot of it just becomes guesswork, really, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Guesswork, but you're still... Let's say there's 10 variables. You're Experienced just... Experienced guesswork, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. And you're, you're bringing it to more like two variables rather than 10 and just thinking yeah. whatever. I'm I'm certainly of the belief that I think um, try and keep it as uh, try not to change too much. If you're in shape, yeah. you're in shape. Yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah. Um, by trying to do too much of a peak, you can fuck it, as as we've already mentioned. So. Yeah, I, I think like if you are going to trial it, then I think start low with a carb loading, and then kind of adjust it each week. If if the person's already in shape, um, then you could potentially add say add 200 grams of carbs to what they're eating over a two-day two, two day period, see how they look after that. If you feel like they've not really filled out, obviously we know we need we need more than that. And then Yeah, I think if somebody's if somebody's Depends incredibly far, yeah. if somebody's incredibly lean by like three, four, five weeks out, then you can yeah. got more yeah, yeah, yeah. You can really play with some variables. Exactly, yeah, that's really yeah, good. Yeah. yeah. Would you um, say it's better to come in to kind of be a little bit on the lower side of carbs, meaning you carb up a little bit less and you fill out a little bit less, but you're drier than fill out too much and come in too full, but a little bit spilled. Would, would, I think would you say that? So? I think it depends on the physique, to be honest. Sure. But that, that was something I was saying to Ryan before. I feel like a lot of the pro bodybuilders these days, they're literally on the cusp of spilling because they want to be that full. You probably shot, saw it at the show at weekend in Italy. I felt like a lot of them had slightly spilled. I don't know if you agree on that, but um, yeah. I, think I, I, think, I think sacrificed a bit of condition just for sheer fullness. I think it depends. Yeah, it's contextual. So in the pro ranks, you're probably better off going for fullness. In amateur ranks, in a, in a smaller, yeah. you know, with the competitions a bit lower, you're probably better off being a bit flatter. Yeah, see, see, see a federation like Fitex are there on the side of caution because I think they really go for condition. Over I, 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 I think PCA do too, if I'm honest. Yeah. And I think yeah. PCA yeah. do, don't they? Yeah. I think mm. IFBB is definitely rewarding fullness, mm. you know. Same and and if you if you come on stage with a with a fairly flat physique but detailed, you're going to get swamped by bigger guys with, yeah. you know, bursting full. You know, mm. I guess it depends who you're going up against. Yeah, meaning in, yeah. A, in let's say a, a pro show, if you're going up against someone like you know that comes in really full, then you kind of have to try and match that. Yeah, yes, I know because when we were talking earlier, Craig, as well, someone's taking your strength. You know, that was something I did at the UK Open in 2020. I knew I was coming up against. Um, oh yeah, the, um, yeah, Simon. Simon. So yeah. I had to play the the size game um, just to make sure that obviously I wasn't incredibly outsized. Um, but, so but people like up. people like you and I, Craig, being six foot three, we're never going to be the fullest. No, because there are guys who are going to be five foot seven, eight, nine, and they're yeah, going to yeah. be. Yeah. So, but what we have is that width and we have height and, and we have lines and detail so would you not argue that it's sometimes good to just play to your strength yeah well that's kind of 
you know, when I did ask for feedback from the PCA, they did say they preferred my look um, when I was playing to my strengths, which is obviously my lines and my details, etc. Obviously, yeah, I haven't seen you playing on stage, but I've seen you Ryan on stage. And it, almost, regardless of who you were up against, like how short and full they are, because of your height, you just have that presence that it just makes you look the biggest guy on stage, no matter what. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. So I assume think, Craig's obviously yeah. very similar. It's almost a skeletal structure, isn't it? That's kind of making you dominate the stage. Yeah, if you, you have what, to have a whole load of muscle mass on that skeletal structure. But yeah, 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 yeah. It's, a, it's it's a bit of both. I think. Yeah. Um, but yeah, me, me and Craig stood side by side today. You can see we're we're so similarly matched, like in terms of our skeleton. Our I width. saw that picture. Yeah, yeah, we're we're, we're so similar in size. So but, you know, as you say, the eye is drawn to it. The eye is drawn to it, but you just got to make sure that you fill out enough, like so you're not just springy, right? So it's tough, man. It's tough. Mm. So, so Craig, then to go back to the point, why why couldn't someone have not competed? And let's say they're really well read about peaking, they're really well read about uh, hormone changes, they're well read about um, stage presence, everything. But they just haven't done it themselves. Do you, would you not say that's still okay? I wouldn't just because sometimes what you read in a textbook is not always how it go, goes in person. Um, and always the old saying or the old, what's what's the word? Um, well, bro science anyway. Um, you know, people talk about bro science and it is quite a real thing. It might not be written in a science, science book, um, but it does actually work sometimes or most of the time really. And that's why it is bro science. And I feel like if you've not done that and you've only read from textbooks, then... How do you actually know? Like, you know, I, I would say in response to that, you don't have to have done it yourself. But let's say you've uh, had experience and you've coached fifty people to the stage, but you haven't done it yourself. I think you, you've got a fairly good understanding about it. Yeah, it? by that point, absolutely, you you're okay. But I think them first five to ten clients have got a bit of a raw deal. I think I'll agree with I, that statement. I think <laughs> go, go, a, lot go on, of, a lot of these people that have competed... When I say they've got then, a raw but, deal, at the end of the day, they've chose you as your co their coach. I so, think you know, it's up to you them. Did, obviously, you did kind of caveat that at the start, that some people have competed, but then they just looked shit. So almost like excluding that. But, you know, just because you have competed doesn't mean you know how to train other people. Almost like, you know how they say that the, the, the ones that can't do, teach. So... In a way, some of the best coaches aren't like sort of competitive, haven't competed at, or don't compete in a way, you know? They're not like athletes. But the, the best coaches aren't the best bodybuilders. Mm. And, and I think that, that's quite telling, isn't it? And I think mm. that goes across, like, even like the football, if you think about the best football managers, they were always pretty shit body, um, players. Uh, not always, but very, very common, right? Yeah. So, so I think more than having been on stage yourself is experience. And I think, um, and I think it's perfectly okay to coach if you haven't done it yeah. yourself. Personally, personally, it's all kind of you can be a very good bodybuilder. In fact, Craig, we know who we're talking about here. Yeah, yeah. You can be an incredibly good bodybuilder, but a pretty poor coach. Mm. Lack of care. And they're also the best bodybuilder because bodybuilding is so genetically predicated that if you're if you're the best bodybuilder, I mean, anything will work to to an extent like if you're Nathan Diasha, I mean I don't know if you both watch um some of some of the, the podcasts that he makes so some of the stuff he says and it's like he goes yeah I'll go out the piss and I'll go and get a kebab and it's like I'm just being, yeah. and he just still looks how he looks like yeah. drinks like vodka like um like a week out and you just think fucking hell yeah he uh he yeah, preps to like he does like four or five week preps. Does it? Yeah. That's it. yeah that's it having him as your coach yeah. he, how how would he know what you need? Because he's yeah. he relating from himself. He would be too blase, I think. He'd yeah. just think, yeah, that'd be, that'd be right. You know what? Right. That's actually an example because it's just come up to me. I watched the pod Fuad's podcast and um, Ian was trying to explain to Guy and Fuad about weighing uh, food cooked versus raw. Mm. And I just, and, and both like Fuad and um, Guy couldn't, and they were like, no, they're like, if you weigh it, and, you, and they started like putting it into, well, if you weigh it after it's cooked and you put it in a pan again to reheat, right. it loses weight again. He's like, no, 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 it doesn't matter. He goes, whatever it's raw, that's what it is. No matter how many times you shrink it, and yeah, it doesn't matter it, how many times, and it yeah. still couldn't get. Yeah. And you just think, fucking hell, you like, I don't want it, like, I don't want to say it like that, but like, Jesus Christ, how can someone that's of that good of a bodybuilder <laughs> yeah, be that? Crazy. 
oblivious of like something so simple. Because that's not that's not even bodybuilding. That's just like mathematics, isn't it? It weighs one hundred grams, and it doesn't matter what you do after. It's one hundred grams. Yeah, that's it. So yeah, I, I um, yeah, I think it it it's, it can be a bit of a problem to be under the illusion that because they're a good bodybuilder, they're automatically a good coach. So mm. yeah, yeah, it's a bit, a bit well, of a gray like area. That ask, like, the biggest guy in the gym with the biggest arms, like, how do you grow your arms? And they're like, oh, you just do some bicep curls. And they're like, yeah. you know, no, it's probably I'm, I'm, not probably the worst person to ask because right, he's probably, his arms probably grow from doing squats. You know, right. yeah. Whereas somebody, I, 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 myself, I, I, I tried every which way in the book, um, and I have got growth. Um, but you know, it's taken me time. A friend of mine said he went to a Phil. Uh, um, a uh, seminar with Phil Heath and he asked him a question. He actually ended up putting his hand up and asked him, he said, how did you grow your arm? So, you know, the way you did. And he just, he said, I just do six sets a week. I just tag them onto the end of my, uh, my push session. That's it. Yeah. And you're like, oh, yeah. so yeah, people will go to the genetic freak and want how they built something. As you say, somebody who had a weak body part and brought that up, they're better to talk to for sure. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. So I think it's a little bit of like, of both, isn't it? Yeah, agreed, agreed. It's almost like what we said with Dan. It's like the science or kind of the facts combined with a practical application. It all kind of comes together. Yeah. yeah. If if you're too married to one of them, it's probably is a bit of a problem. You need to be able to yeah, be yeah, malleable, yeah. malleable. You know. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So let's get a conclusion on that. Is that going to go into room one hundred and one? Coaches who have not uh, competed themselves. What you Dave. want me to, Dave? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I would agree purely because, like I say, if I had to pick a coach, I'm not going to pick someone that hasn't done it. Um, so oh, I'm going to disagree respectfully. As much as you do make good points, I think overall there are too many other factors that can come into it. So I'm going to have to, mm. I'm going to have to hold the door there, mate. You don't get a clean no. sweep. So one of this one is not going in. <laughs> but the other four they're fucking in there they're fucking in there but that's it mate cool we're all up some good points of discussion though, especially on that last one but I, I hope that people can watch this and take something from it as, you know with the time stamped in you can just go to the bit that you want and yeah. so yeah that's it cool. thank you very much for your time Greg thank you I appreciate it man appreciate it good being on thank See you later man <laughs>